The way we respond to food depends on our genetic background. And this is something that health professionals have seen in their practice for a long time. For example, some metabolic conditions depend on uh, genetic mutations that affect the ability to uh, utilize certain nutrients of food. One uh, well-described example is the uh, metabolic uh, genetic condition phenylketinurian, um, a metabolic um, disease that is caused by a genetic mutation in the gene that codes for the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. The carrier of this mutation are unable to metabolize the um, essential amino acid phenylalanine. So this is a case uh, in which um, a perfectly um, good and essential uh, component of our diet become um, a poisoning um, component for the carrier of this genetic mutation. Another uh, well-described example of this is uh, lactose intolerance the inability to digest the sugar containing milk, the lactose, it's quite, is, is what is more frequent in the human population. Now we know that this is a, a, a situation that's far more common than we used to think, and that the majority of the human uh, population hasn't got the ability of digest lactose past uh, infancy. And, um, and this is caused by polymorphism in the, the um, uh, regulatory region of the gene um, that code for the enzyme lactase. What we have um, now with the completion of the Human Genome Project is um, the improvement of the technologies that allow the sequencing of um, nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, and the computational technology to analyze the big data that come from um, uh, the sequencing. And now we are in the position to identify gene variants that are linked to uh, chronic condition associated with um, diet and lifestyle. In particular, uh, a technologies that led to um, identify a large number of gene variants associated with chronic conditions are called genome-wide association studies. These type of studies genome-wide association studies compare two um, group of population. The one with a condition, chronic disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, um, cardiovascular condition, and a group of healthy population, and investigate what gene variants are associated with the disease group. And so we now have a very large number of uh, um, loci that um, are associated with um, those chronic conditions. It's also important to consider that genome-wide association study are, by definition, association study. They, are, they, do, they do not identify the causal link between um, the, um, the gene variant and the um, disease. The way the experiment is done doesn't allow to um, calculate the contribution that each um, polymorphism provide to the disease. Uh, very often, uh, the contribution of each of these polymorphies, what we call effect size, can be quite small. A good example of this is um, um, the identification of a um, few polymorphies in the gene FTO associated with obesity. FTO um, increase the risk of uh, developing uh, obesity uh, of um, 1.7 times. So it's still a very small um, contribution um, that need to be put into the context of all the other uh, polymorphisms of that particular individual together with the uh, lifestyle, including diet and exercise. So while uh, Doctors and dietitians have seen uh, um, the effect of genetic backgrounds on um, the response of food and diet pattern. Now we are in the position of uh, um, understanding the mechanism behind uh, this response. And uh, we can foresee that in the near future we will be able to apply this knowledge and translate it into practice, allowing a more targeted and personalized approach to um, dietary advice um, by uh, health professionals.